The Big Sky Soccer Tournament began this afternoon as the NAU women's team took on the Eastern Washington Eagles. To open up the scoring, junior Sierra Gamble scored for the Lumberjacks in the 15th minute. Then Eastern Washington even the score at 1 in the 25th minute. But NAU was able to pull ahead as Tori Brawley and Demi Schmieder put in two more goals for the Jacks. Eastern Washington would make a final push and score a goal with seven minutes remaining in the game. But that was not enough as the Lumberjacks would get the 3-2 win. The Jacks will play Portland State. Friday at 11 a.m. in the Big Sky Conference semifinal game. And moving over to the volleyball court, the MPA Spartans begin their playoff run tonight as they take on Tempe Prep. This is the first round of the playoffs for the Spartans as they head into the postseason with a record of 20-10-1. Senior Kaylee Nation averaged just over three kills per set in the regular season. Senior Scotland Manson led the team in digs as she nearly averaged eight per match, while the team as a whole averaged ten Different kills year, per set you know, during the regular like season. The Spartans are, ho are playing this game in Prescott, and it just started at 5 o'clock. And staying on the volleyball court, the, Lumber the uh, Lumberjacks are in action tonight as they will take on the Eastern Washington Eagles. This will be the final home stand for the Jacks this season. The Jacks head into tonight's matchup with an 8-4 conference record and an overall record of 17-6, which has them tied for fourth place in the Big Sky, as they just came off of a dominating win over Weber State, sweeping the Wildcats in three sets. Janae Vanderplug, Lauren Jacobson, and Sydney Kemper all combined for 48 kills in the last match. The Jacks will also play Southern Utah Saturday night at 7, while tonight's match against Eastern Washington will start at 7 and will be televised right here after the broadcast. Both games will be played at the Roll Activity Center. And today it was announced that cross-country head coach Eric Hines was named the Coach of the Year by his other fellow Big Sky coaches. This is his eighth consecutive win for Coach Hines on the men's side and second Coach of the Year honor for the women's side. Hines won his first Coach of the Year honors back in 2009. And as for the men's cross-country team, they remained ranked 10th in the national rankings after sweeping the Big Sky Championships. And as the cross-country team heads into the regional championships, Coach Hines talks about the preparation that his team is putting in heading into the next meet. No different than any other year. You know, it's a 12-week plan from the moment we start uh, the season and the start sco school to the national championships. And so this is at about week uh, nine, I believe. So it's a lot of miles and a lot of hard workouts to get to this point. Well, each person is a little bit different, but there's not much more we can do now between now and regionals and then a week from then to the national championships. And so we'll have a uh, little less mileage. So actually, instead of building, we're probably backing off so that they, the athletes can feel rested and feel better. And some athletes will focus more on still some longer distance repeats, while some athletes will focus on a little bit shorter but faster repeats. The Mountain Regional Championships will take place next Friday, November 14th in Albuquerque, New Mexico as they look for their third straight victory. And last night, the Phoenix Suns were at home to take on the Memphis Grizzlies at the U.S. Airways Center. And we'll jump right into these highlights here. And okay, here we start things off with the Suns having trouble hanging on to the ball. Courtney Lee is able to dig it out. He finds the wide open Mike Conley for the easy layup down the court. Then later, with just two seconds on the clock, Eric Bloodsoe, he just he throws up a prayer here, hoping to get it in, but he gets his own rebound for the easy deuce. Then later on, Courtney Lee again. He fakes out a couple defenders here, finds the ball, and double pumps for the easy layup. Then later on, Tony Allen is on the drive as he is able to get the and one on Isaiah Thomas, which is two minutes left in the game. Suns would fall on this one, 102 to 91. Suns will look to bounce back tomorrow when they host the Kings.